Hey everyone, it's Joe Dezeas here from the Automator. In this video, we're gonna show you how you can easily access properties from UIA. And if you stick around to the end, you're gonna learn some of the nuances and taking action on these things and getting text from certain values from properties because it's a little more complicated than we would hope. <laughs> yeah, so basically this is based off of, in, it was inspired by a question made on our Friday free call. So at the end, there was somebody asking about that. He, was, he wanted to get the title of a video and so on. And by the end, I was able to actually give him the answer. But then I realized that it is not as intuitive as one might think. So let me share my screen real quick and show you an example of what I'm talking about. So right now, if we go ahead and I just have here site for auto hotkey, and I'm just going to use the inspector tool to try to track some elements. Let's see what happens. So I just got an element here. Now, one of the things is that we have these properties and for example, I want to target this button, for example, and say that I want to get something from it. One of the things that I might want to do is get the name. Usually we target the name. If we don't have an automation ID, I think it doesn't have any. So if it doesn't have an automation ID, I would go by the name or something else. Automation, oh well, I don't see it. Now say I want to grab, I, I want to find it, but after I find it, I want to get its location on the screen, right? So I want to get something that is called the bound rectangle. And you will notice here that there's a property here that is saying bounding rectangle that tells me, it, this is great because not only tells me where the X and Y locations are, right. which right. is gonna be the left and top. Left and top is just the left corner and the top corners. And then after that, it tells me the right and the bottom, so the right side and the bottom, and that tells me the width and height. So the when you get the left plus the uh, right, you will get the width of the whole control. And if you get the top plus the bottom, it should give you the height of it. So, so basically you can get not only the location, because they're just giving you four points. They're giving you the point on the left, the point on the top, the point on the right and so on. And after you get those, you can infer the size and the position and everything else. So I just want that information from that. How do I get it? Well, we have seen several times that we can load the library and now you can get an element from handle. The way zoom that- we... Zoom in a little, please. Yes. So let me just go ahead and do that. And basically what is gonna happen is that as we have done several times, you just use the WinExist function. And from there, I just go ahead and grab um, an executable, AHK, uh, AHK executable, and this is going to be site.exe. That's the one that we're working with. So that should give me an element here. Let's just stop for a minute and double check that I did get that. I thought the site executable was different. Uh, that's why I'm just going to double check and not assume. But yeah, it seems to me that it wrapped the element. Excellent. So, okay. so yeah, it is site.exe. So this is good. Now, as we mentioned, we could use the site.findFirstBy and we're gonna use an expression to target the name of the item. So we set that the name of this one, uh, I should get used to just simply searching. Just right click, copy, and we're gonna use that. Oh, hold on, I'm used, uh, so this thing actually changed the element that I was looking at. So you had highlighted, yeah. Name, so this is the one that I want copy the selected properties. And now when I go here, um, I just need to add an equal sign between those two, equal. Now, if you use the dump function here, let's just message box it, message box. I should get uh, some information and notice that I'm getting the name again, I'm getting the type and the localized control type. Excellent, great, fine. Now. What if I want the bounding rectangle? How can I do that? Well, the idea would be just saying like bounding rectangle. That would be kind of like my, my intuition. It would say like, hey, uh -huh. if I want the name, let's just get the name, right? right? That's, that's my intuition. Now, if you try this, what is gonna happen is that, nope, there is no element like that, okay. That was a bummer. So the point is, there's a list. You are on the right track. If you're trying this, you are on the right track. It's not bad. The problem is that there's a little bit of a nuance is that 
whenever you're working with uh, the UIA, the UIA library itself, the one from Windows, has a section that is called cache. So you can get the, all those properties, all those properties that you see here, you can cache them. Why? Because as we have discussed previously, a window can have thousands of elements. So when we use, for example, the dump all uh, function like this, you will notice that it takes a little while for it to load because for it, oh, well, I'm using the... the, the right, the, you, did, you tied it to an, a certain element. Yeah, but let's just go ahead and remove that element for now. What is going to happen is it's going to take a little while in certain programs. This one was quick because it's very simple. But if it was uh, uh, resolved, for example, yeah. right, it, it took a little while for loading it because for each of them, it had to get all the elements. You see these elements down here? It had to get the elements. So what you can do, that is part of what you can do, is that you can cache, you can do it the first time, cache all that information. And the second time that you need information about the elements, you don't need to kind of like get it from the program. It is already saved in memory. And for that reason, it's going to be quicker. Now, for that reason, as you can get cached and current information, because the information can change, okay? So you can save the information in your database and the program might change the information. So sometimes you want to re-update that, right? So you have two ways of accessing, current and cached. And that is reflected when you want to access an element. In this case, you have to say current name. And that would actually access the property name name, but the current one, not the cached value. That's what is going on. You have to specify it. So when you go ahead and hit F9, now I get the name by itself. And now I can do the same with other things. So uh, let me go ahead and do this. And instead of the name, let's just go ahead and get the bounding rectangle. Again, I can just copy that. I know that I have to put the word current in it, but then I can paste that and I can remove the other part. And let me stop right here because what is gonna happen is that once I run that, this element, the rect uh, um, variable that I set up here should have an object. And it I was going to ask you that. Yeah. Awesome. Right. And it is an object that has the yeah. four points that you're looking for. That's awesome. So basically, again, you can get whatever information you want from an element very quickly. The only detail is that you have to make sure that you're getting the current element, not the cached well, one. You need to you stipulate which one you want. Right? Exactly. Exactly. For us, most of the time, it's probably the current is what you're right. I, in, in my in so if I was the one making the library, I would definitely make the one with the word current. Like if you don't specify it, it's going to be uh, the current one. Uh -huh. But if you specify cached, right. then it's going to be the cached because right. it is more intuitive to just know that um, this that I could get a specific property like that. It's very intuitive. Now, and then it, let's let's finish up with this. Like you could throw a click on there also. Is that right? Yes, that is right. So basically uh, you can, if you have an element, one of the things that you can do is just click, right? You can use the function to click on it. There is a method already in the element that allows you to click on it. But if you want to save the position for later, so you want to save the position and you don't want to click right now. Yeah. Right. So let's say that your script is divided in two sections. One is a discovery section, which is what you should be doing. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's go ahead and start with the discovery section. That means that when the script executes, the first thing that you do is a dump all. Right. So you you might do a dump all or something like that, or you can just create a tree walker and get the bounding rectangles of every single element. The things that you're interested in. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. But basically, after you save the information, later on, you have a hotkey that would click on that rectangle, for example. You can do that because now you saved the information in a variable. And if I send a click to that particular rectangle, at least one pixel down and one pixel, because the bounding rectangle is exactly where the control is. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that it, it can be clicked on that point. But if you go down a little bit, just five pixels down, and send a click in there, it should click on the element itself. So again, um, 
this is something is awesome because now it means if you take a look at all the properties that you have here, if you're interested in something specific, like is enabled or is it, is it off screen? You can get that by just simply copying that and doing the find first by element, right? And then instead of click, you say current, and then you paste is off screen. And that you can use as, as an if statement. If, if that button is off screen, just return or something like that, you can do. So one thing though that perplexed me there was on the click, you didn't say current click. No. Now okay. notice, notice that the click is a method. Notice that it has the parentheses and you can pass parameters to it. Oh, like it's this. not a property. Okay. It's not a property. No, no. So yeah. basically think about methods as actions. Yeah, yeah. You want to click something, then this is a method. Now a property is just values of it. And in this case, we're referring to the, the ones that have these are the properties, not the methods. Right. And this is where our course on objects and classes is really helps you understand the differences and why, why it's important and, you know, what to expect from each of those things. And exactly. That's really cool. Excellent. So I think that that is, oh, uh, yep. One other thing I was going to say, we don't have to share a screen on this, but um, on a call last week when we were working with DaVinci Resolve, we were working with someone who's automating a lot and it, he brought up a really good point of some elements don't exist until you like mouse over them. So even though the dump all you could run, it may not get everything, right? You oh, might still right. have to actually move a mouse over something to get not it only display. moving the miles, sometimes you have to click something for Fair it enough. to Sorry, show yeah. up, right? So, so, right. so sometimes moving the mouse already displays a different icon. Those are those hover hover buttons that when you hover the button, kind of like switches. That might be one of those. But if it's a menu, for example, one of those menu, yeah. you would have to click on the button for the menu to appear. While you, if you haven't clicked on the menu item, the menu is never going to show up. Well, so. It wasn't, was it Skype that we were doing where it was kind of similar in the sense that we had to click on it and that the GUI that appeared wasn't actually a subset of the Skype menu. It was and actually in the same resolve, we had the same issue that there was a specific menu yep. that was not part of the main program. It was right. a different thing. So there's a, a lot of little details that you have to take into consideration when automating with UIA because, and, and just to kind of like make that clear if anybody's having this issue this might be your issue you see that i grabbed an, a handle to site some elements inside of site like this button for example might not be a child of this handle that you got and that's what was happening so right. we were trying to get and we never got a way to get it and it was because it is not a child of the main executable is something else yeah, right. But yeah, that, that was a big head scratcher for a while there yeah. with Escalada. I remember we were looking at it going, wait a minute, it's actually under its own, like a whole different thing here. Um, but yeah. That's when he that's when he discussed about getting the root element, which is kind of like the the main element that contains everything. So if that particular element is not showing up under your program, right? You can definitely go ahead and check the root element for it. The only thing is that there are so many elements right. there that it would be a little bit more time consuming. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks. Thank you, man. Bye.